This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. Welcome to Bois, Bois. King of the Hill podcast. I'm Mike. And I'm Rusty. Rusty, we're in a different uh, setting. Uh, We're in the uh, high-class video lounge here uh, at Rogue Media. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, we will. Moving on. uh. Well, I would say that, but we're only in here because somebody's painting (laughs) the other room. So so we're at season four, episode 16, moving on up. Yeah, this one has uh, a few stars in it. Oh, yeah? Yeah, we get Andy Dick. Is he? Uh, is he the the roommate? Griffin. Yeah, that's yeah, him. Yeah, that's yeah. him. Yeah. Uh, Vicky Lewis as Kate. Okay. Which I guess is one of the roommates. Yeah, it's one of the roommates. And then Maura Tierney as Tanya. Mm. Okay. Yeah, so. one of the roommates only talks one time. Um, yeah. And then the other two say a few things, but. Um, all right, so let's get to it. Um, we start this in the alley, uh, and the guys, this is before the credits or anything, the guys are sitting there, they're uh, drinking their beers, and they're watching Pops uh, mow the yard, yeah. like on his riding lawnmower. Uh, I don't want to interrupt you. I, no, I forgot something about yeah. those three. Go for it. So those three people I just named, Andy Dick, Vicky Lewis, Maura Tierney, mm-hmm. were all co-stars on news radio. Oh yeah, with Stephen Root. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So that's where they all tie into the King of the Hill news radio world. Great show. Yeah. Great show. Great show. God rest uh, Phil Hartman. Um, so they're uh, they're they're watching Pops, uh, and we got introduced to Pops a long time ago. Jim Cummings. Yeah, he uh, he's riding the lawnmower around, and uh, Hank says, "Boy, look at Pops go! Eighty years old, and he still has reaction time to miss the sprinkler heads." And uh, <laughs> Bill Bill is like uh, Bill says Tony Curtis is eighty. Um, you know Tony Curtis? Mm-mm. Tony Curtis would be the guy from uh, Odd Couple, uh, the one that was all stuck up. Really? Okay. Um, and then we Pops kind of goes, mm, and then I believe he has a heart attack and just slumps over right there on the mower. But the mower is still going around. Yeah. That's yeah, the yeah. issue. Uh, and Hank's like, huh, look at him. Now he's just showboating. Come on, Pops. Let me see those yeah, hands at 10 and 2. Button. And, I mean, he's just unconscious on this thing, and the thing's yeah, just spinning just around and around. Hank's tripping. Bill says, uh, uh, Pops, Mr. Papacito? I'm not sure where he gets Mr. Papacito from. I don't know from. where he gets that from either. But Pops, Pops comes on by, and he crashes into the fence, uh, and then one of the little tires rolls towards the guys. And Boom Air's like, oh, man, don't hate hey, hey, man. And that's it. <laughs> so dangle, dangle. Pops, what you about Pops has died on his, uh, on his lawnmower. Uh, and we get the opening credits. Yep. Uh, we, we've got no bell, no yell. But, no uh, bell, no yell. No, nope, no. Nope. We're getting close, though. We're getting close to a bell and a yell. We're getting there. We'll get one eventually. <laughs> that's right. So we got our regular opening credits. Uh, and now all four of the guys are in the alley and they're watching a realtor uh, pound in a uh, for rent sign in front of Pop's house. Okay. So we know Pops is Pops dead. Pops out of there. Pops no is more gone. Pops. Yeah. Uh, Hank says, uh, I'll tell you, it's sad, but at least he went doing what he loves. Uh, Bill says, well, we should be so lucky. You know how I want to go? Right here in the alley with you guys. Yeah, it'll probably be my heart the way things are going. Oh, we should rent that house ourselves and turn it into a clubhouse. Who thinks 
that they want to rent a house in their neighborhood and turn it into a clubhouse. Yeah, I don't know. That's uh, that's something that like fifteen year olds or, these, or younger think about. These guys not are like forty five year old yeah. men. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Well, aren't we all? Well, like, yeah, it's you know, true. Yeah, I mean, I so. how many things do you still engage in now as an adult that that you either did engage in as a child or couldn't engage in as a child because of some parental restriction? That's true. I yeah. uh, I tell my wife all the time that. Uh, if we want to get food from two different places tonight, we're adults. We can. We can. Yeah, that's, or, that's, that's or like, if I want to play Sega Dreamcast, I couldn't do it as a kid because no. as a kid, you get one game system yeah. every like quarter. Oh sure. Uh, or every you if know that, like four yeah. years, mm-hmm. but yeah. every every like four years or so, you get a yeah. new game system. If yeah. that, so like getting to play all these old game systems or watching these movies, I couldn't watch. Or, do you play Seaman? Seaman. You know the Dreamcast game about the fish with a human head. I have never heard. <laughs> you should inter- you should let me introduce you to Seaman after this. Uh, the game. All right. Yeah, yeah, the game. yeah. yeah. I make after, that clear, the game. After yeah. this, yeah. we might talk about that on the, the Friday show. That's yeah. right. Friday show is Seaman only. Uh, <laughs> so he says we should get the house and turn it into a clubhouse. Dale says, I am currently an official supporter of the clubhouse idea. I mean, he's just boom. He's ready to go. Oh, of course he is. He he's, wants his clubhouse. He has a clubhouse in his own house. <laughs> he goes, I also reserve the right to be called Dash. Bill says, well, I'll be Spike. <laughs> I don't know why they want these these goofy names yeah, just to know. be in their clubhouse. Hank says, a clubhouse? I don't know. would not that something you do when you're in your 30s? In your 30s? No, nah, man. <laughs> no, nah, oh, man. Come on, Hank. You know, we got a little DVD player, man. Jessica Rabbit, man. Freeze frame all. You talk about fridge filled beer, too, man. You know? And so. <laughs> Freeze framing Jessica Rabbit. All <laughs> right. right. Well, we know what uh, <laughs> you know, Boomhauer does in his spare time. Uh, Hank just kind of chuckles. He goes, well, boom, how I tell you, you ought to be in sales. All right, I'm in. Like, <laughs> mumbling about Jessica Rabbit and a DVD player. That's what did it for him. That's what did it. He didn't even know what he said, but it just <laughs> sounded too good to be true. Dale says, welcome to the clubhouse, Hank. What do you want to be called? Bill says, how about Rudy? Uh, Hank says, how about Hank? <laughs> Dale says, Hank it, it is, is, Rudy. Rudy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we're at the Hill House. It's nighttime, uh, and... Uh, Poor Luann is coming home from work. I, I'm assuming she works at Sugarfoot's, the way that she's dressed, right? She's got the, the well, either that or the steak place. Panhandle or steakhouse. Yeah, that's what yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It is. okay. Um, she's still in her. Which is uh, which is the same restaurant that features the 72-ounce yes. Lone Star Sirloin yes. Steak Challenge, which was featured in Season 3, Episode 2, and they call it Bobby Love. And season two, episode nine, the company man, mm. which is the one where that guy from New York comes down and oh yeah yeah yeah, Hank yeah. tries to woo him. is with him. Thatherton's the one wooing him, and yeah yeah. yeah. Um, so she comes in. She's in her her uniform still with her little white cowboy hat, and uh, she's coming in through the sliding glass doors in the kitchen. And Bobby's sitting there waiting for her. You are so late. You know I like my bath at nine thirty with my onion loaf. With my <laughs> onion loaf, yeah. So that's an odd way to take a bath. She says, "She says I'm sorry." Uh, do they do they soak the onion loaf? I don't know, man. It's it's gross. Is it like way. sopping bread? Like they dip it I, in the bath water? I think I think in that uh, analogy, Bobby is the sopping bread. You which know, there is, was like which is the gross uh, part. There was these female streamers that were selling their bath water. Yeah, I don't want any part of that. You Thank don't. you very much. No, nope, I'm good. Yeah, if you're drinking somebody's bath water, I'm telling you, please, I don't know if they're drinking it. Help. I think they're sniffing it like smelling salts. Yeah, please go get help either way. They're trying to get a whiff of the stink. <laughs> so uh, she says, I'm sorry. The cash register didn't balance. It took Gary 20 minutes to confess. <laughs> That's a rough place to <laughs> yeah, work. Yeah, that is a rough place. Uh, and then she sets these bags down that she's carrying, and she pulls something out, and I'm assuming it's the onion loaf for Bobby, yeah. but it's in the shape of a swan, which – you know, you, you you see those How the when hell they, do you get bread? In well, that's what I'm swan. saying. You know, you put them in the the uh, uh, aluminum foil, like a lot of Chinese restaurants and stuff. To go, it'll be in this foil, and they tie it up like it looks like a swan. Yeah, or whatever. I know what you're talking about. But yeah. this is actual food in the shape of a swan. Would you would you shape the bread before you put it in? Well, I don't think this is bread. I think this is more like uh, the uh, onion loaf at uh, like the steakhouses. Like uh, what's yeah. the what's the Australian one? Yeah, but it's still no bread. rules, just right. No, it's just it's it's onion that's deep fried. Oh, you're talking batter. about you're talking about a, a blooming uh, onion. A blooming onion. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think yeah. that's what he's talking about. I thought they were talking about bread. I thought It'd be a lot easier a to shape bread. bread than it would an onion, but yeah. uh, either way, Bobby takes it with the ketchup. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, which is, is gross. Is bread. Uh, and uh, he is just, he just walks right away because he's ready to go take his bath and eat his onion loaf. And uh, Luann says, do you mind if I take a quick shower first? I smell like waitressing. 
and here's what I don't – oh, I guess because they're having to share the tub. That's why she's saying that. He goes, I'm sorry, my ba- bath is already drawn. Uh, and then he grabs the An dish onion soap. onion loaf is literally just a it's loaf? Just, it's onion. A yeah. fried onion? Yeah. That sounds, fried onion. Hey. It sounds pretty good, yeah. Hey. I always love Who wants to onion donate loaf. an onion loaf? Yeah, send us an onion loaf, please, yeah. in the mail. That would be uh, the best. So, well, speaking of that, I don't want to go on a tangent, yeah. but I was scrolling through DoorDash. You're talking about ordering food. Yeah. I was scrolling through DoorDash last night, and they've added in some places that are national. Right. You could order, there's like this famous deli in Washington, D.C., where you could order a really? sandwich from their deli and have it shipped to your house. It gets shipped to you. <laughs> Yum. <laughs> well, I, can't, well, I, I can't imagine wait to get that pork. some of it is probably good after being shipped, yeah. but it's crazy to think that you could order some, like, that is nuts. who in the hell is ordering, like, like, deli kind like of I don't think about food more than 20 minutes before it's time to yeah. eat it, yeah. so it's like... Yeah. You well, know, Bobby, Bobby preparing could, that far out. Bobby could get his gout food delivered, I guess. I have a buddy right now who has gout. Really? Uh, 30, 35 mm. year old with gout. That sucks. Yeah, and uh, he said that uh, he has to go on a pescatarian diet. Not even yeah. a pescatarian diet because there's some fish you can't eat. Yeah. He's like on an all chicken diet mm. now. Okay. Well, I mean, whatever it takes, you know, to get off of the get off of the gout, I guess. Uh, no, I'll, I'll die with a cold cut in my hand. I don't know, man. It's pretty painful. Uh, <laughs> so he says, he goes, my bath is already drawn. And he takes off, but he, he grabs the dish soap from the sink for his bath, <laughs> yeah, which is, which is a, the weirdest that's thing. That's grody, yeah. Then we see, we uh, hear, and this is weird because you never, we, we've only had this a handful of times. Uh, Hank and Peggy are kind of laughing in bed, and it's totally dark in their bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, okay, I'm taking off my boxers, and they're just laughing and stuff. <laughs> and then she pops up at the end of the bed. The light gets turned on. Hank is there with no shirt. Very rarely do you see Hank without a shirt. Yeah, uh, yeah. And Peggy is holding his boxers up over her chest. So, so she's yeah, all the way up here. Yeah, up. Covered yeah. Her, yeah, covered yeah. her nipples. Uh, he said, what the, Luann? She goes, oh, my God. She pops up at the end. She goes, I thought you guys were sleeping. <laughs> but you weren't sleeping. <laughs> and Hank's like, exit <laughs> the master bedroom right now. He's boxers, ask for boxers from her. Uh, and then next thing is we're in the kitchen. Uh, they're all in their bathrobes. Hank and Peggy are giving Luann the what for here because she came in during special time. Yeah. Uh, he goes, Luann, we have rules in this house. Luann says, why are you guys getting so upset? I didn't see anything. And this is my favorite quote of this entire episode. Peggy pipes up and says, you saw your uncle's nipples. Yes. That's, that's the best. You saw your uncle's nipples. Is that the nipples. catch line at the end? I love it. No, 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 no. It's a different one. Oh, okay. But uh, uh, the way uh, he's got a piece of notebook paper that he hands to Luann as he's talking to her. He goes, the way I see it, you're in direct violation of four of our rules. She looks at the paper and she goes, you had it notarized? <laughs> he goes, That's crazy. He, he goes, one, no water usage after 10 p.m., 9 p.m. curfew on school nights, entering the master bedroom without verbal permission and your barefoot in the kitchen. Lady Bird eats off that floor. <laughs> Luen says, God only has 10 rules, Uncle Hank, and his house is much bigger. <laughs> That's a good line. <laughs> it is a good one. That's man. a good smart one. I like she just that. slams that paper down and goes away. Uh, the next day, we're in the alley with uh, all four of the guys. Uh, Hank pipes up first. He goes, all right, Dale, for the last time, I can't turn in this rental application without your social security number. And he's there. He's got the application on a clipboard. He's just taking all the notes. Dale's like, fine, five, 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 five. <laughs> Hank says it's not, not even, even enough, enough numbers. numbers. He goes yeah. five five. That's still not enough. Okay, I'm leaving your name off, but you're still responsible for one fourth of the rent. I figure I can pull my extra workbench out of the public storage and keep it in the clubhouse. That'll save me a few bucks a month. He has an extra workbench in a storage building that yeah, he's paying that's, for. That's crazy. Uh, it doesn't goes, seem very economical. No, it doesn't. He goes, and I've given it some thought, and I decided to start charging Luann some rent for living in my den. Uh, and then we see Khan and Min uh, showing some yuppie type people that house because they're trying to pick their neighbors. Yeah, you know? yeah for sure. Khan's uh, like, see, a house right across from me. Uh, and then you hear Dale pipe up, they want to use our clubhouse as their living quarters. Hank, we have to do something. I, again, this is still a house. Right. It's not. Yeah. It's, it's not a clubhouse. House. It's, it's not a just club a house. house. It's a yeah. house for sale that right. someone's going to buy. So <laughs> figure the, it out, bud. The people, the guy in the preppy clothes, he goes, I don't know, Con. The house looks nice, but the neighbors look a little hillbilly to me. Hank overhears this and he says, hillbilly, I got an idea. Follow my lead. 
Hey, Mr. Con. They go over to him. Hey, Mr. Con, then some fancy blue jeans y'all's lady friend is wearing. <laughs> Bill, of course, doesn't have any problem playing this part. He says, uh, they must be city folks. I just whipped up a new batch of possum stew I'd be willing to share with you. Don't worry, I took off the feet. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> the lady, the preppy lady, she goes, what did he say? Men trying to save the situation. She goes, oh, all great chefs do that now. Wolfgang Puck cut the feet off everything. <laughs> <laughs> trying to change it up. Yeah, right. trying to make <laughs> Dale, he yeah, says. Wolfgang uh, Puck in the trailer park. Exactly. Dale says, uh, got my own fine life, got my own fine city. They're, they're doing kind of a, a, a little jig over there on the side now to prove that they're hillbillies. So yeah. they're singing, got my own life, got my own fiddle, sun's coming up, gribble, gribble, gribble. <laughs> <laughs> which is thank god i'm a country yes, boy thank god i'm a country Denver. boy right yeah, yeah, right yeah, and the then they and then him and and uh bill start saying life ain't nothing but a funny funny riddle thank, thank god, god i'm, I'm a, a country, country boy. boy yeah they're doing a little dance they're just day laborers boom howard <laughs> boom howard's over there doing that he's doing the clapping <laughs> and con says yeah they're just day laborers they're putting in my deck uh every they they all go off and uh dale says our plan worked spike rudy boom howard let's check out our new clubhouse and they start walking off and Boomhauer looks a little sad about this, and he goes, "Yo, man, you talking about everybody got a dang old nickname except me, man? I don't like dang old man, dang old man." He goes, "All right, Boomhauer, what do you want to be called?" Oh, B Dog. <laughs> <laughs> B Dog. He's already thought this through. There you go. That's your tattoo, Mike. B Dog. <laughs> B Dog. That's what I need. Uh, okay, so now we're in Pop's house for rent, and uh, the guys are going through it, talking about how they're going to get their clubhouse ready to go. Hank says, so I figure we knock down that wall. We build a new wall over there. That'd be fun. Fun. Bill says, hey, a refrigerator. They all look in the fridge, and there's one single Alamo can of beer. He says, look, Pop's last beer. Hank says, huh. And then he goes over there, and they, they raise the beer, and they say, to Pop's. And then as they're, as they're, as they're toasting him, they look out the, uh, the uh, sliding glass door, and Hank says, that son of a bitch had a swimming pool. And then all of their faces are, are pressed against the glass. Bill says, I thought I heard splashing. He goes, how could you not know? You lived next door to him for 18, 18 years. years yeah. Bill says, I thought he lived on a lake. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hank says, what lake? It was goes, none of my, none business. my business. That's my favorite exchange in the whole, the whole episode. I thought he lived on a lake. What lake? It was none of my none business. Of my business. <laughs> yeah. All oh, right, so shit. then the, the realtor lady comes in, and she goes, so you're the ones who broke my lockbox. Uh, Dale says, uh, was the open house canceled? She goes, I'm sorry. The house has already been rented to a lovely college student. Hank says, okay. college student? No college student's going to have a credit history like mine. And then in walks Luann. Boom. She has rented this house. Yep. Uh, the realtor says, here are your keys, Miss Platter. Welcome home. Uh, Hank's very surprised. He goes, Lou Ann. And then Dale says, young lady, you better march right back into Hank's den. That's your home, and that will always be your home. Right, Hank? Hank thinks about it for about a half second, and he goes, Lou Ann, welcome to your new home. He's Whoa. just so ready to get her out of his house. <laughs> He's ready. He don't even care. Nope. All right, and that's our first commercial break. We'll take that one, and we'll be right, right back. back. Well, let me tell you, Rusty, uh, eating healthy used to be a struggle for me, but that was before I discovered the Blendjet 2 Portable Blender. The Blendjet 2. Now when fast food temptation strikes, I just blend up a delicious and nutritious protein shaker smoothie. You know, they gave us a whole bunch of those uh, little packages that came with the blender. Yeah. And there's some really good flavors in there. I mean, there's some like that matcha thing. The green matcha? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, those are pretty damn good. Uh, Blendjet 2 is portable, so you can blend up smoothies at work, uh, a protein shake at the gym, or even a margarita on the beach. Mm. It's small enough to fit uh, in a cup holder, but powerful enough to blast through ingredients like ice and frozen fruit with ease. Maybe a human thumb. Don't. It doesn't. Don't put your thumb in it. Blendjet 2 is whisper quiet, so you can make your morning smoothie without waking up the whole house. Lasts for 15-plus blends and recharges quickly via USB-C, which has saved us all. There's nothing worse than turning that USB thing over and over and over and over, and then finally finding how it plugs in. You know? Oh yeah, I don't USB like that saved Yes, us, saved USB C us saved us all. Best of all, Blendjet Two cleans itself. <laughs> Just blend water with a drop of soap, and you're good to go. Uh, there's 30 plus colors and patterns to choose from. There's a Blendjet Two to complement just about any style. I have, um, we have a pink one. Lavender. Oh, I think ours is lavender. Uh, yeah. Mine is the Toy Story Aliens. Oh, yeah. It's like the Pizza Planet one. Ooh, yeah. that Ooh. one. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, they've got some really cool uh, uh, colors, and yeah. but I really like the patterns. I know one of the people here got one that looks like Woody the Sheriff. Is there a from, code with them? 
There is a code. What are you waiting for? Go to blendjet.com and glab, gra- <laughs> grab yours glibity, today. Glibity, glab glob. it today. Glibity, uh, glibity, glob. And when you do glab it, uh, make sure you use the promo code. BWAAA12. That's to get 12% off your order and free two-day shipping. No other portable blender on the market comes close to the quality, power, and innovation of the Blendjet 2. They guarantee you'll love it or your money back. Blend anytime, anywhere with the Blendjet 2 Portable Blender. Go to Blendjet.com and use the code BWAAA12 to get 12% off your order and free two-day shipping. Shop today and get the best deal ever. Blendjet 2, formerly known as Blendjet. (laughs) Hey, everyone. It's me, your puzzle-loving pal. Did you know I was a puzzle-loving pal? I didn't know you were a (laughs) puzzle-loving pal. I got to tell you about my latest obsession. It's Wongo Puzzles. Uh, These things are the real deal. They are high-quality, handcrafted, and perfect for anyone who loves a good challenge but doesn't want to dedicate their entire kitchen table to puzzles for a week. Trust me, I have been there. I will tell you this. uh, My parents, you know, they're very old and decrepit, and uh, they make – uh, they, they do puzzles all the damn time. Yeah. Like there's always a table that what has else like an unfinished do, right? puzzle. Yeah, it's either that or, I don't know, Die. <laughs> feel, feel your bones. Uh, so they these puzzles, these Wongo puzzles, they are 100% wooden. Uh, they'll last forever. Uh, each piece is hand-drawn. Just think about that for a second. Each piece is hand-drawn. Hand drawn. So no two pieces are the same, and you'll discover some fun, whimsy pieces as you work through it. Whimsy. They come in a custom wooden box, which is perfect for storage and gifting. You know, before we started doing this, I didn't realize how many people I know already have these Wongo puzzles. I mean, they're they're apparently pretty... pretty you can't go wherever Juan go. <laughs> With uh, stunning designs and unique shapes, Wongo puzzles are a cut above the rest. I loved doing the snow globe puzzle myself. It was great to pull out a puzzle and be done in a night and not have it on the table for a week. Uh, So what are you waiting for? Let's go to Wongo Puzzles, W-O-N-G-O Puzzles.com and pick a puzzle today. And be sure to use the promo code B-W-A-A-A for 10% off your order. It's the most fun you'll have with a puzzle guaranteed or your money back. Go to W-O-N-G-O puzzles.com and use your code B-W-A-A-A to get 10% off your order and get puzzling right now. All right, and we are back. Uh, We are now uh, at the Hill House. It's night. It's in the kitchen, and they're packing up, or Luann's packing. For some reason, she's packing in the kitchen. Uh, and she's wrapping a stuffed animal in newspaper so that it doesn't break, I guess, on the big move. <laughs> like yeah, two yeah, houses yeah, yeah, over. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's funny. Hank says. I like that. That's a good one. <laughs> it is. And it's never, it, they never say anything never about it. Never say nothing about it. You never see her unwrap it either. No. Think. Hank says, I won't be stingy with the tape, Luann. You tape away. She goes, uh, it's not that I want to move. It's just that I hate living here. There's just <laughs> too many rules. I don't want to go anywhere, but I hate <laughs> right, it here. Right, I hate it. Uh, Hank says, yep, way too many rules. Goodbye. Uh, he's always just pushing her right out the door, man. Always, and then regrets it later. Luann, yeah, exactly. Luann, she goes, and if I have to pay rent, I'm not going to sleep in a den and share a bathtub with a 12-year-old boy, okay? And then this is the first time Peggy's hearing about this. She goes, rent, excuse me, Hank, did you pass a new law while this hill was not in session? Well, well this that's, hill, that's, how she said, this a, hill was not really in session. a really great turn of that phrase. Is, yeah. like that. Hank says, just tied up a rental loophole. The important thing is she's happy. Uh, Lou Ann says, and I'm not paying for it all alone. See, this friend of mine who got kicked out of her apartment said she had three roommates who also got kicked out of the apartment. And she said I could have them. I don't know. I just think I should move out before we end up hating each other. So let, let's get this straight. Mm-hmm. She she has a friend. That friend was living with three other roommates. And they, they all get kicked they out. They all get kicked out. And the friend says, you can have my three roommates. Yeah, they're, they're yours. Solid logic right there. Terrible. Solid yeah. logic. <laughs> Uh, Peggy says, oh, Luann, we could never hate. And Hank says, she's making a good point, Peggy. I mean, jeez. Hank is always just so rough with this kind of stuff. He, he got, is very rough. I don't know if he means to be, but boy, he is He's just, trying to get her out of there. Oh, he's ASAP. ready for her to go. He wants yeah. that den. Uh, I don't blame him. You know, that's the no. worst. That's the worst thing in the world, man, when you lose your childhood bedroom and you try to recapture it for the rest of your life and then somebody stops you tra- from doing it the whole just way. Just any room like that, you know? Yeah. I mean, just... Anyway, uh, having people live at your house is rough. You know, I mean, it, it always goes on a little too long. Yeah. It always it takes a little more than you thought. So now we transition. Uh, all the guys are in the alley watching Luann and Peg move. Um, and Dale says, we lost everything so fast, and Hank did nothing to stop it, like the Swiss. 
Uh, <laughs> Bill said, how's your precious den? Uh, Dale says, visual confirmation, roommate number one, female. We see a girl walk up. She's got short hair, and she's carrying yep. a, a picture of a Marine under yeah. her arm. Uh, Bill says, she's dating a jarhead, huh? Well, my first choice was the Marines, but I couldn't do enough sit-ups to be a Marine Corps bar barber. What? You can't do enough <laughs> sit-ups to be a Marine Corps barber. barber. <laughs> he goes, Semper Fi. Uh, then we see a guy in running gear, and what I'm talking about is like that tight spandex that you see on a guy on a bicycle. Yeah, like the bike suits. And he's yeah. got those those wraparound sunglasses on. Yeah. Uh, and he's doing what I think is some Tai Chi out in front of the house. Yeah, I don't know what he's doing. Hank looks at him and Probably goes, drugs. <laughs> Hank, looks, Hank looks at him and goes, oh, great, we got a disco dancer. <laughs> and then Dale says, anyone can move slow when he gets out there and he starts doing his Tai Chi. Yasha, yasha, yasha. Yasha, yeah. <laughs> Then we hear a, a horn honk and a and a car pulls right up in front of him. It's a green uh, like VW Bug. It's got a, got a lady in it. She goes, "Hey, hey, guys, drinking beer in my parking spot." Uh, he goes, uh, Hank says, "No, I don't think so. This is where we assemble, assemble, assemble. Uh, <laughs> always has been." She says, "Well, always has been a penal code, Texas Penal Code four nine zero two, which prohibits public drunkenness." Hank says, what are you talking about? Nobody's drunk here. And, of course, Bill. I don't know, Hank. I'm pretty buzzed. <laughs> I'm pretty buzzed. <laughs> yeah. The lady says, uh, Miley says, this is my space. She just goes ahead and parks there. They all have to jump out of the way. Hank's like, hey. She goes, yeah, thought so. And then uh, Dale says, gentlemen, I give you roommate number three. I kind of like her. <laughs> of course <laughs> yeah, he does. Like of course her, he yeah. does. Uh, okay. So, a uh, Poppy, uh, Poppy, Bobby and Peg. Yeah, that's a, Poppy, that's a, that's Poppy a Pill. <laughs> that's a, Poppy Pill. That's when you put two of them together. Poppy. Uh, they're in the living room watching uh, Monsignor, uh, whatever his name is. Yeah. Uh, because the only thing you hear from the TV is, Vaya con Dios. Oh, know, yeah, that yeah, kind yeah. Of yeah. Uh, and then we see Hank. He's going into uh, the den there. He's got a chair with him. He turns it around. He sits on it backwards. I'm not sure why people yeah, do, I'm not that sure why they do that to think. Yeah, uh, you hear kind of a music playing in the distance, and he goes, huh? He sits back in the chair in the empty room, uh, and uh, he th this is the room that was Luann's, and then he sees an extension cord going, going all out the way the to window. his house. Yeah. He's going to have a high-ass electric bill. He looks at it, he looks at it, and he unplugs it, and you see the lights go off in Luann's house, yep. and the guy going, uh, little help? And then he plugs it back in, and he goes, thank you. And then he unplugs it again. Everything goes out again. He goes, now you got a lawsuit. This is the voices in that house. <laughs> yeah. And Hank just goes, the audacity. So he goes straight over to Luann's. He's at her door. Uh, he knocks on the door, and uh, the guy comes to the door, and he goes, Hank says, I have unplugged your house from my house. He's shining this bright light in the guy's face. Yeah. Uh, and the guy says, uh, you know, it's not very neighborly of you. You know, when it's 105 degrees and you want to use my pool and drink my soy shakes, I'm going to remember this. Hank says, yeah, well, there goes your welcome wagon tool set, too. You happy? So I guess Hank gives everybody a welcome wagon tool set. I guess so. Whenever they come yeah, through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess That's so. very nice of him. Uh, this is the next day. We're at Luann's house now. Uh, and she says, uh, she comes into the, the living room there and her other three roommates are sitting there. One of the guys is working on a bike wheel. Yep. There's another girl reading a magazine and the girl in the back is on the phone. The girl who uh, was carrying the Marine picture. She's on a phone. Mm -hmm. Luann says, so who'd like to meet my other roommates? The manger babies. And she pulls them out. Yeah. <laughs> she says, this is Reginald Featherbottom the third. Oh, and I know what you're thinking. I perform a Christian puppet show. What were what were they thinking, Luann? Uh, I don't what know. What were they thinking? I don't know what they were thinking. They're probably thinking there's something wrong with the situation. <laughs> the girl from the from the VW says, uh, "Okay, uh, we need to go to the grocery store." Luann says, "I already went to the store, and Sir Reginald noticed how expensive food is these days." The bike guy says, "There's food," and then all of them just run into the kitchen like they're just going to start eating. Yep. She looks at one of the manger babies and go, or she has Sir Reginald, and she goes, "They're not going to leave you a speck." What? 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 She knows already. Yes, she does. Now we're in Hank's empty room. Uh, Hank is in there by himself. He's putting up a new picture on the wall. And, of course, it's that same Tom Landry picture that he's got in the yeah, garage. The, the stoic uh -huh. pose, Tam Lund yeah. Tom Landry. Yeah. He goes, one in the garage, one in the kitchen. Uh, one in the den. <clears throat> and then through the – oh, yeah, one in the den, sorry. He uh, Through the window, all three of the guys are just kind of looking in there and, and – uh, 
Dale says, what you doing? Hank says, oh, nothing. Uh, just working on my den. And then they all start climbing through the window. Everybody makes it except for Bill. Bill, of course, comes through yeah. and falls uh, flat on his face. Gets right up and goes, I always wanted a clubhouse with a secret knock. How about da 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 You know, he knocks yeah. like that. Uh, Dale says, no, that's a secret knock at the Shaving gun the club. Yeah. I don't want to get confused. And Shaving so, the haircut, two bits. He goes, he goes, how about this? He just keeps knocking. Yeah. Like he just, I don't even know what that is. Hank says, uh, you know, part of the reason I agreed to this clubhouse idea was that one of the bedrooms over there was going to be my private den. And, well, now that I've got my den, uh, and Dale says, <clears throat> our clubhouse, Hank says, my den. And then Dale starts is knocking again. He goes, yep, that's the official knock until, uh, uh, until I can get us a retina scanner. A retina scanner, yeah. I don't know who's making that knock. Yeah, I don't either. Uh, okay, so now we're back at Luann's house. She's going through what looks to be bills that she's filled out, like she's splitting up all the utilities amongst all the all the people that live there. The one on top says Griffin owes gas twenty dollars, electric thirty five fifty, water fifty five dollars, and then phone seventy seven bucks. That seems like a lot towards the end there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she's, she goes in there and she says, uh, hey, guys, I figured out all the bills. I used additions and subtractions. And this is her trying to be responsible, <laughs> yes, yeah, which is, is which is really cool of Luann. I just love the fact she says, I used additions, additions and, and subtractions. subtractions. That's yeah. a trailer park math. <laughs> she's passing out the bills to all her roommates. And Griffin, the bike guy, he goes, oh, wow, I'm going to have to catch up with you later. See, I have a bike race coming up, and there's going to be this chick there that I dig. So I need a new shirt that really sports my abs. I mean, check it out. He lifts his shirt up just to show his abs. Yeah. Uh, and then the, the girl that came in from the VW, she says, yeah, I can't pay this right now either. I'm going to go to Vegas this weekend. She's wearing a, a Wonka shirt from like the Wonka candy bars, yeah, which I thought was kind of cool. Luann says, um, okay, Kate. And she looks at Kate, who is the Marine girl. She's on the phone. She says, uh, the phone bill is pretty much a hundred percent yours. Kate pauses for like half second then goes back to her conversation and says so anyway my little sister she borrowed my kangle hat and yes i'm mad so luann comes over there she turns off the tv and she says listen when i signed up for phone service i signed a document that said i would pay on time i swore it on my mother's maiden name <laughs> and then griffin says you're kind of being a house nazi uh and the girl uh the the bug girl she goes uh uh she starts to light up or yeah the bug girl she starts to light yeah. up a cigarette and uh luann says hello i thought we agreed no smoking in the house and then uh the girl that lit super up super dramatic she, with oh it yeah God. the girl the that, nazis had anti-smoking laws yeah the yeah, girl hitler. who lit up she goes you know who else had anti-smoking lo laws uh who was it oh yeah hitler and then uh nazi. griffin's like <laughs> nazi yeah and then luann just stares for a little bit I mean, she knows she's in bad shape at this point. Oh, yeah, very bad shape. None of these people are going to do what they're supposed to do. Not at all. She's going to get stuck with all the bills. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Uh, okay, so now we're at the Hill House. We're at the dinner table. Uh, and Luann is back there, and she's kind of knocking on the glass door. Uh, Bobby lets her in. He goes, Luann, what's up, girlfriend? I hadn't seen you in the longest time. She goes, oh, uh, okay, you guys are finished with dinner already. Peggy says, why, are you hungry, Luann? Or, are, are you eating? She goes, do you need money? Get my purse. And uh, Luann says, no, 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 Aunt Peggy, no. I'm on my own now, and I don't need help from anyone. Oh, but I am doing a book report on what people eat for dinner, so uh, what'd you eat? Peggy goes over there and says, let me fix you a yeah, she to go no plate. food. You yeah. know, about talking about the bill thing with roommates, I was always scared to have the bill in my name, not yeah. because I was afraid of me being able to pay it. I was always afraid that somebody else wouldn't be able to pay it, and I would get stuck with it. Oh, they'll stick you with so it So I time. never let yeah. the bill be in my name. I always paid my share, sure. but then somebody would come to me, and they'd be like, well, I don't have my part of the bill. And I would be yeah. like, well, I don't have your part of the bill either, so you yeah. give me my part back, and we'll just be without the lights because yeah. I'm not paying That's your exactly share. That's exactly right. Yeah, because yeah, I don't mind sitting in the dark. It don't bother me none. So Peggy says, let me fix you a to-go plate. She does just that. She she wraps it up, puts it in a sack, and hands it to Luann. Uh Hank comes in the room and he goes, "Hey, Luann, what you got, got there? there?" She goes, "Oh, yeah. nothing. This isn't mine." And then she just leaves. She last thing she wants to do is tell Hank she's taken anything from his yeah. house. Uh, Hank says, "You know, it's nice to see Luann once in a while. Knowing she'll be leaving kind of makes it like a fun game." <laughs> <laughs> Peggy goes, "There's nothing funny about starvation, uh, except for Comic, comic relief, relief, of course." Yeah. Do you remember Comic Relief? So Comic Relief was a um, like a telethon almost that comedians put on to raise money for homelessness. 
Uh, it was uh, Robin Williams, uh, Whoopi Goldberg, and um, oh, uh, that was in the late '90s. The right? guy from City Slickers. Um, you know what I'm talking about? Billy Crystal. Billy Crystal. Yeah, it was those three. And then they would have on all these comedians and stuff. I think it was on HBO. Uh, but it was it was just a big fundraiser for homelessness. Yeah. Uh, okay, later, we're at Luann's door. Uh, Hank, Peggy, and Bobby, uh, they knock on the door. Peggy says, now, Luann is very proud and may not accept our charity, but she is also very hungry, so who knows? Uh, the shirtless Griffin comes to the door, and he says, uh, Luann's usually home from work by now. Uh, and then... <laughs> They all go in. He sits down and starts shaving his legs. Uh, Hank, whoa. Hank says, uh, whoa, 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 because he sits down in a blow-up chair, like instead of an actual chair, it's there's just a, a big blow-up yeah. chair. Yeah, it looks like a batch. It looks like a bunch of broke college kids. Well, it looks like the the guy from the pot uh, play, you know, the one that was uh, uh, the other, it was Debbie's roommate. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Or Debbie? Donna? Debbie? Donna, Donna, Donna. Donna, Donna. Donna. Uh, and Bobby, of course, is very interested in this whole leg shaving thing. Uh, and he goes, uh, guys can shave their legs too. That's very interesting. Uh, and, and I mean, this is the fastest I've ever seen Hank and Peggy. He goes, Peggy, he goes, Bobby. And, uh, <laughs> Bobby says, sorry, dad. So we get Peggy, Bobby, sorry, dad. I mean, it's just boom, boom, boom. Yeah, just like fast. that boy. Yeah, yeah. He didn't want him to get any ideas about shaving his legs. Uh, the bug girl comes in uh, smoking. Uh, she says to Griffin, heads up, the Fuhrer's home from work. I mean, <laughs> Jesus, that's so... That's terrible. Yeah. Uh, uh, Luann comes through the door. She steps on a bag of trash, and she goes, whose turn is it to take the trash out? Don't make me get out the chore wheel. Oh, oh, Uncle Hank, Aunt Peggy, you're here. Peggy says, yeah, we brought you a casserole for dinner. She goes, oh, no, 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 I won't hear of it. I'm on my own now, and I can make you dinner dinner i'm on it she gets into the kitchen she's just real frantic she's all over the place yeah, oh she's god upset. crap dinner uh where are the crackers where's my macaroni and cheese where am i and she is pissed she comes in there and goes where are my steakums Man. that's it who ate all my food come forward griffin said uh, that's a diet it is crackers yeah. macaroni and cheese and, and steakums, steakums. Yeah. eating like a steakums toddler. are gross um it, griffin finally pops up and he goes i needed a carbo load she goes griffin we said no shaving in the living room unless it was an emergency because he starts to yeah, <laughs> seek how <laughs> yeah he goes he goes seek how she goes when i think of how many stupid onion loaves i had to sell so you people could talk on the phone and eat my cookies it makes me so and then uh peggy whispering says uh hank maybe we should intervene you go talk to the german one because he <laughs> he goose steps out of the room like he's like you know uh, treating her like hitler so of course peggy yeah, thinks he's, her bad, peggy yeah. thinks he's german uh, she goes, you can talk to the German one. You go talk to the German one. Yeah. <laughs> and then Luann says, we have rules in this house. We all agreed to them, people. I'm counting at least 12, 12 violations. And then she looks over at Hank and she goes, oh, my God, I have become you. Oh, I hate myself. And that is the second commercial break. We'll take that. Luann is pissed because she thinks she's Hank now. And we will be right, right back. back. Hey, Rusty, did you know that you could be putting oil and chemicals in your coffee? No, I mean, I didn't know that. I mean, I love coffee creamer, but I don't think I've ever turned a bottle around to actually see what's inside. You know, recently I did, and I found out many of my favorite creamers, like especially the one my wife used to use, uh, they contain ingredients I would never intentionally add to my coffee cup, like canola oil, ooh, dipotassium phosphate, whatever Sounds that is, terrible artificial flavors. I don't, I can't take artificial flavors a lot of the time. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm good on any flavoring. Taste, they taste gross. I like. I don't like flavors in my coffee. I like. Co I like the earth and flavor of. Coffee. I mean, I love coffee. Don't get me wrong. I I do love it. I just um, I don't like all that crap in my coffee. Right. Yeah. No. Who does that? So let me tell you about Laird Superfoods. Then uh, they have better ingredients, amazing taste, and functional benefits. Uh, Laird Superfood creamers are crafted from the highest quality all natural real food ingredients. All Laird products are sustainably sourced and thoroughly tested to ensure that you're incorporating the cleanest, finest fuel into your routine. Now, they're all natural. They've got whole food ingredients. Uh, they contain naturally occurring MCTs from coconut oil. And everybody tells you coconut oil is good for you. Mm -hmm. There's no artificial flavors, no colors, no additives, uh, no sugar from highly refined corn syrup. So that's a big deal right there. Um, 
If you take one thing you do every day and make it better, Laird developed his creamer himself to stay powered for a day on the waves. He was a big wave surfer, Laird Hamilton was, and he needed a morning fuel that could allow him to spend the entire day chasing the ultimate wave. So he made this creamer, and it is, uh, it's, it's crazy, crazy good. Uh, Laird sources high-quality plant-based ingredients globally and puts an emphasis on U.S. sources whenever possible. They aim to source responsibly and sustainably and believe that the food you consume should be as good for the earth as they are for you. They have honest and transparent products and labels. Uh, If you try it, you won't go back. Um, They have functional superfood creamers, instant lattes, and prebiotic greens. They have a variety of snacks and supplements full of wholesome plant-based ingredients to keep you charged for wherever life takes you. So to get a deal on Laird Superfoods, I need you to go to zen.ai, B-W-A-A-A, king of the hill. So that's zen.ai slash B-W-A-A-A, king of the hill. And your offer code there is B-W-A-A-A. So Laird Superfoods makes a better creamer that keeps you powered all day, and it's better for you, the earth, and your coffee. What do you say, Rusty? You want to go get some coffee? Mmm. Coffee. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, Rusty. Yeah. Did you know that dehydration is the leading cause of daytime fatigue? Oh, no. I don't know about you, but like 2.30, 3 o'clock, I just hit a wall almost every day. I was shocked to learn that even mild dehydration can cause headaches, muscle weakness, brain fog. But luckily, there's a cure. Oh, there is? Uh, Actually, I should have said there's a solution. It's called cure. Cure hydration. Uh, The cure hydration is an oral rehydration solution, or ORS, uh, that contains the perfect balance of electrolytes. We know how important that is because plants crave it. Super important. And glucose to help your body absorb water and rehydrate quickly. The formula is made with all natural ingredients like coconut water, powder, and pink Himalayan salt. Whoopee. And it is free from artificial flavors, sweeteners, and preservatives. Cure Hydration is vegan, gluten-free, and non-GMO. Uh, that makes it a great option for anyone with dietary restrictions and preferences. Uh, the packets that they give you, they're convenient. They're easy to use. You just mix them with water and drink. They're perked for on-the-go, travel, or anytime you need quick hydration. Uh, hydration is more than just drinking water, Rusty. It is, uh, that's what Lauren Picasso, a lifelong endurance athlete, discovered as she struggled to stay hydrated no matter how much water she drank. I've known people like that. My yeah, wife, my yeah, wife yeah. drinks so much water, it's crazy. Lauren found Cure, a science-backed electrolyte drink mix to make hydration easy for everyone. Uh, Cure believes that hydration should be simple and effective, but also clean and natural. That's why they only use the highest ingredients and quality plant-based stuff to avoid any artificial or harmful additives. They're committed to transparency and honesty. All of their ingredients are clearly listed on their website and packaging, and they're always happy to answer any questions or concerns. So are you ready to combat dehydration? Absolutely. You, you can try Cure today and feel difference for feel the difference for yourself. Use your code. B-W-A-A-A. <laughs> Sorry, I blanked. You're good. For 20% off your order. Try Cure today and feel the difference for yourself. Use our special code. B-W-A-A-A. For 20% off your order. Uh, your coupon will be activated at checkout. Try Cure Hydration. Stop drying out. All right, and we are back um, from the second commercial break. We're back at the Hill House, yep. um, and Hank, there. yeah, Hank is there. He's like, I'm worried about Luann. She hates herself because she's become Bobby. Uh, and see, he doesn't get it. No, he don't. He goes, I mean, what's that all about? And Peggy says, Hank, she was pointing, pointing at you. you. Yeah, he wasn't pointing at Bobby. Right. Yeah. She's become you, and that's why she hates herself. And Hank says, oh, well, well, that's and she's crazy. just crazy. Yeah. She goes, Hank, please talk to her. I can hear her crying in, the, in her room. Uh, he says, in her room, my den. My den, For all yeah. we know, she could be laughing. All right. He goes in there. <laughs> for all we know, she could be laughing. <laughs> he goes in there. Oh, he's a jackass. And for some reason, the guys are there sitting on a couch with her, and, and Boomhauer's over there uh, playing with a a, uh, a tarantula. Uh, and uh, she she's just crying, and, and Dale says, it is very sad to see people take advantage of the kindness of others. Bill says, yes, it is. Uh, Hank comes in. He goes, all right, Bill, Dale, Boomhauer, get out. Uh, and then, uh, it's just, uh, they, they just look at him and he goes, Oh, uh, spike dash B dog. Yeah. <laughs> spike dash B dog. <laughs> then they finally get up and leave. 
Uh, Lou Ann's still crying on the couch. Uh, Hank says, you know, back in your house when you said I'd become you, she says, yeah. He goes, well, you said it like I'd become you when, well, you probably could have said it more like, hey, I'd become you. She goes, what? He says, you see, Lou Ann, a lot of good stuff happened in the world when people were like me. Sure, they'll never write a Hollywood musical about a fellow who keeps his yard free of debris and pays his bills on time, and the MTV won't put a video on about a man who requires shoes in the kitchen, but it's because <laughs> of people like us. She stops and goes, but I'm not like you. It's just too much for me, and oh, all the bills, and they mooch my food, and they're always on the phone, and I just can't take it anymore. I can't stand one more day. They're wearing my socks, Uncle Hank, and she's like, <gasps> she goes, oh, God, oh, God, I need a paper bag. Hank sits down and he goes, no, now take it easy. You didn't see me getting all huffy every time you made me mad. She goes, I made you mad? He said, sure, and you were three times the pain in the butt these kids are. She goes, oh, good, then you'll be able to handle them for me. He says, maybe I could, but I don't want to. Uh, I want to give you a fish, Luann. I want to teach you how to fish. That way you'll eat forever. So, again, you know, the saying is teach a man to fish and he'll eat he'll forever eat, or yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in comes Dale. I, I don't understand this exchange, but in comes Dale with a mustache and a jumpsuit on. And he says, hello, I'm with the electric company. Don't mind me. I'll only be a minute. <laughs> he sits down on the couch and goes, I'm on break. Please continue with your private conversation. Do not worry. I am deaf and cannot hear what you are saying. <laughs> Actually, uh, Artie says thing. that, uh, Dale's number two of a thousand faces is the deaf electrician who yep. only speaks to say I couldn't help but overhear. That's right. And he says that's uh, a reference to Dick Nixon. Oh, okay. So like the plumber that comes in. Gotcha, yeah, yeah, gotcha, yeah, yeah. gotcha. Uh, Hank says, you know. I'm just a plumber. I can't hear anything <laughs> you're saying. That That's the whole premise. Yeah. I am deaf and cannot hear uh, what you're that saying. Bit, yeah. Yeah. Hank uh, pops up. He goes, uh, you know, Luann, you and I both want a little police pace of fire. A little place of our own. I thought my den would be my oasis, but now the only place I can get away from various annoyances in my life is my lawn. And he looks out the window longingly and he goes, you know, when I'm out there mowing, edging, watering, even fertilizing, nothing else matters. Yep. That's what you got to do, Luann. Got to find yourself a project. Find your own lawn. Uh, and he leaves the, the den. Um, <laughs> Luann's like, that's it? And then, of course, Dale, uh, the deaf uh, plumber, comes in and says, I couldn't help but overhear your uncle's bad advice. Well, you're deaf. Uh, she goes, what? And then he rips the mustache off, and he goes, ha-ha, it is I, Dale Gribble, master of a thousand, thousand faces. faces. And you just met face number two, <laughs> the, the deaf, deaf electrician. electrician. Uh, he goes, uh, the only thing your roommate, i.e. E. enemies, <laughs> will understand I is e. fear, i.e. Yeah. psychological warfare, i.e. E. dirty tricks. And he says it worked for Dick Nixon. She goes, well, but he goes, for example, get a hold of some goat's blood. And then blood. what they called him, Tricky Dick. <laughs> Tricky Dick. He goes, uh, get a hold of some goat's blood, taint that blood. Then when your roommates need blood, give them the tainted goat's blood. It's a perfect plan. <laughs> what God. The hell? Hey, he's trying to kill somebody. <laughs> Luann says, I don't want to hurt anybody. I just want them to do the dishes. He goes, oh, well, in that case, stack the dishes in the shower. That's the way Nancy gets me to do them. <laughs> well, that's. I mean, that's actually sound advice that, that he sound ended advice. up giving. That's not bad. That's yeah. not bad advice. All right, now we're back at Luann's. We're vet your roommates. <laughs> Don't live with shitheads. Oh, yeah, no yeah, kidding. Try man. not to anyway. Uh, we we come in, and Luann looks in the pool, and uh, uh, Griffin is in there, and he goes, Luann, do you mind? She goes, Ugh, what are you doing? He goes, well, somebody left a bunch of dishes in the shower. Now, he is in the swimming pool washing his hair. Yeah. Like uh, lots of suds and all this stuff. And uh, she, he says, somebody left a bunch of dishes in the shower. And he goes, that's kind of rude. And he gets out of the pool and leaves. She says, good Lord, I hate these people. I know, Jesus, I know. You told me never to say hate. I'm sorry, Lord, but I really, really do. And she's using, <laughs> the, she's using the skimmer to get all the suds yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it dawns on her. She has a thought. And uh, that doesn't happen very often with Luann. So she has a big thought. Now, we're back in Hank's den, and, oh, this is where Boomhauer's letting the spider crawl on his arm and stuff. Hank's backwards in the chair. Dale and Bill are on the couch. Dale says, uh, truth or dare? Bill says, dare. Hank, Hank just like, ugh. <laughs> he starts going outside. He sees the green bug. Uh, he just needs some air from these stupid guys. Yeah. And then he sees Luann in a bathing suit over there skimming the pool. He walks over, and she goes, hey, Uncle Hank. Guess what? Right this second, the pH balance in this pool is absolutely perfect. Hank says, so, you found yourself a project. He said, do Yeah, you... so she's taking care of the pool like That's he would right. take care of his lawn. That's right. Yeah. He says, do you get the same uh, high I get from my lawn care? She goes, you know, I think I do. And then the lights go off in the house. The music stops. You hear the guy go, excuse me. 
Hank looks at it and he goes, you didn't pay your bills, did you? Oh, well, Luann, at least you tried. And then here's smart Luann. Yeah, this is, this is, this is a really yep. – I've, I've never heard of anybody doing this. This is next it's level. It's very smart. She goes, oh, I paid my bills. Then I closed all the accounts. If my roommates want gas, water, electricity, or a phone, they can just open up their own accounts. Simple as that. <laughs> Hank yeah, looks absolutely. at her and he just smiles because he knows that she – Grew up just a little bit. A little bit. bit. She's figuring something out. Yeah. Yeah. She's figuring it out. Hank says, you know, if you're ever up late studying for a test and you want a little electricity, you still got that extension cord. She, They both go over and sit down, and they're they're popping open an Alamo. Yeah. And she says, no thanks, Uncle Hank. You taught me how to fish. He goes, yep. Yep. She says, yep. Yep. And that is it, man. It's, and what I love about that is that giant pullout that we get again from the from the, her from little them. place, and it shows the whole neighborhood, the whole neighborhood. And all that stuff. Yeah, Wes really Archer's cool. direction again. Awesome. Very nice. Yeah. Now the credits come up, and uh, <laughs> we have Cotton and Topsy going over to Pop's house. They don't know that Pop's is dead. Yeah, they don't at all. And so Cotton's at the door, and he goes, "This place looks terrible. You ain't Pop's." Whenever uh, Griffin opens the door. He goes, oh, yeah, that old guy? Yeah, he died. He goes, dead? Then I'm arresting you for suspicion of murder. Grab him, Topsy. They both just, like, push their way in. <laughs> yeah. And and you hear you hear Topsy go, right, boy, you're just coming out closer. <laughs> the guy says, hey, you get your hands off me, you Nazi. And that sets Cotton off. He's like, who you calling a Nazi? All right, Topsy, let's roll. And they both just leave. I'm, I'm assuming... They knocked the shit out of this guy. Or yeah, something yeah, yeah, something, yeah, something. Because then they just leave, and the whole place is dark. And we get our final credits, and then after the credits, we hear Dale, Dale say "truth or dare," and Bill says "dare." I got a little bit about Topsy real fast. Yep. So this is the first time that Topsy, who's voiced by Stephen Root, is uh, shown to be. Oh wow, Stephen Root does Topsy man. also. Huh? Yeah, he does. Uh, so it's the first time that he's shown to be one of Cotton, oh, like secondhand henchman kind of things. So Topsy was a sergeant in the platoon that Cotton was a colonel of in World War II, yeah. and he used to babysit Hank. If you remember, That's right. season three, episode twenty-five, uh, he has no teeth. His biggest weapon is to inflate his toothless mouth, and then he eventually dies in a future episode, uh, season nine, episode three, "Death Buys a Timeshare." He leaves ten grand to Cotton, and Cotton goes and buys a timeshare in Mexico. Oh, yeah. So he appears in Old as the Hills season three. He appears in season four, two episodes in season five, season six. He's mentioned in season eight, mentioned in season nine, and then they mention him again in season thirteen. Anytime there's even a, a so he's hint. mentioned a few times. Yeah, even time. Anytime there's even a hint of the VFW, Topsy's there. You know, I I think you know there's a lot of offshoot episodes that i think about that would be great i think those those four guys sitting at a bar top oh yeah would be hilarious i think if you did them VFW maybe post. while they were in the army you know if That'd you did like a little bit of a prequel well well that would well, be cool. well well, well uh, like combine them so they're at the bar yeah, telling stories sure. and they do like the sure. flashbacks yeah. to when they were young i think that'd be great i think that would be cool uh you should have seen it in color by jamie johnson would be the yeah. theme song yeah you should have nice. seen it yeah. in oh, color. Yeah. yeah that'd yeah, be great good. there you go all right, you want to tell everybody where they can find us? You can find us at B-W-A-A-A-K-O-T-H.com. You can go to our YouTube channel as well, youtube.com slash B-W-A-A-A-K-O-T-H to see this uh, episode. Uh, if you're listening to it on audio, you can go watch yeah. the video. Yeah. You can also check our Patreon at patreon.com, B-W-A-A-A-K-O-T-H. And we now have a Blue Sky Social. That's right. That's right. We are so uh, go check us out we're just Blue about Sky. everywhere we can be. And again, the Patreon right at this moment... Places. Yeah, the Patreon right this moment is uh, just support. It's just support, a little, yeah. Just a little three dollar tier. We ask that you that you help us out and make this show. As you can tell, things cost money, and so um, if we can keep this go going and and you guys can help, that would really appreciate it. Uh, but we thank you for being here, and we'll be back on Friday with a that ain't right. With Matanye. With Matanye, indeed. <laughs> This has been a Rogue Media Network production.